All right, it's time to get started. It is 4.02 on this, the fourth day of March 2021. This is Aspirant. Aspirant. And that was me coughing. And I was doing a little bit of off, off stream work. I was doing a lot of this stuff. Does it build? Looks like it build. So, a clean commit start today. So it became obvious uh, yesterday that my scenario stuff was not really ready to go, especially especially the hey let's let's load stuff. From here, so all right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over it myself. Close all the things. Close all the tabs. And in our data, we have an editor context, and the editor context is the thing we use. This is this is the data for the editor. There will probably be a play context. Which will have very similar information. And main, so I don't know that this isn't just our context, but so we're editing. I think it's there. So we, we have a list of scenarios, and then we have an index into it, and then that one is okay, well, load, load, load a copy of that. And so that's what we want to do. Because that gives us. Our stuff now. The scenarios that, that we have are practically nothing. We don't have any room in it. So, um, it's time to do a. We're gonna build. We're gonna see how well we run. And we don't. We don't build. So okay, we've got some of that stuff. Can cover is not a member of scenario object. So all right, I'm gonna have to have that in here in in my room cell. So how will, I, how will I do that? So that's going to be in room cell. So I want to have room cell. Oh, so this is .h. So I'm going to do a virtual tool can Call it can cover for now, right? And the new objects and the old objects. We're gonna we're gonna give this and this needs to become a virtual function or a it is a virtual function, it needs to become a protected function. cover if the new object can cover the old object we don't have that 
don't have that. We have no object room cell stuff. That's all right. Let's see. It's going to tell us that we don't have something implemented in our scenario room cell. Can't instantiate that, so let's go to the declaration of that bad boy. For stealing my focus, go to declaration. So I got the pool and upper. Um, you are star. Cast that star. Because should they both be cast? They should both be const. And this is const. So check this out. Alright. We're going to const all over the place. We don't need to be able to change any of these things. We don't need to have what they're called. Object and old object. New object. Old object. And actually, we're going to go ahead and say that this defers it to um, scenario object instance. Now it's going to tell me. Wait a second! You ain't got you ain't got those. This has been a lot of fun. This is this is some interest. This is interesting code to write. Okay. Oh, we don't have. 
room cell. So, room generate room cell. Result external symbol. So, if we scenario room cell. So, generate room cell doesn't. Ah, okay, so scenario room. One result external symbol. What? Let's go look at, so we're calling the thing in room, so let's see in room, they've got a generate room cell, so the T room cell star generate room cell should be in our scenario room, so let's just grab that, in the scenario room, does it match the thing, the T room cell, which is that, Remember each room cell size t size t equals zero. All right. Well, let's just do this again. All right. So that's exactly what what happens here. Put this the scenario room here or here. Problem are you having? Inherited member is not allowed. It's not allowed. Scenario room. I'm very confused. Bring me scenario room. Should match the thing. This is interesting. Let me look at the output. General simple. So we are in scenario room. Scenario room. It's right here. It's right here. Scenario room cell. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so if I go to room. I don't get it. Let's scenario that OB took. So scenario.
Yeah, so this is, this is, this is all in Linker Land, so what's going on? First in function room. In room that room. Trying real hard. Room scenario room so okay. referenced in the function and that's so that's our rich Okay, so it's referenced in the constructor to room. So, okay, well, let's, let's take a look. Okay. One thing that is so. How many times do I have this? You know what? Let's move it out. We're gonna we're gonna move out this uh, set size thing. We're going to have, this does nothing, no columns, there are no rows. That is going to be a private cleanup void, we'll call you clear. Safe to leave you, right? Clear. So this is actually be called clear. This is what clear does. Clear does that. Zero. And you actually do a thing. This should be the part where how about this? For now we're just gonna say there's a set size void. Set set size T columns, size T rows. This thing right here goes like that. Get rid of you. Before we do that, we're going to clear. And cells clear. So, please clear out all of our cells. And then we set the size. From JSON. <clears throat> So 
then really my scenario room from JSON should work? Kind of? Alright, scenario room.cpp when I'm doing trying to do the from JSON. Super broken. Okay. But that's alright. We'll get there. So room. Ah. So then really. Maybe there. Nothing. Descriptors. Right. Move up the room. So actually, we don't need that. Either. Build it and see what see what's all wrong with things so we have a good good clue as to what, what to do next. So if in my scenario room, let's say in room I had the ability to set the size, right? So let's say this went here. Okay. And we just say rooms D dot set size columns rows. All right, columns and the rows. So we got two step here. I'm just trying to get myself to a point where I can I can generate a room. Now it works, and that I'm okay. This works. Well, this compiles. I don't know that it works. So, what kind of where are my descriptors? Where are you? Did it came. Descriptors. Okay. You are floor type terrain and avatar type creature. Okay. That's all I've got. Well, let's make let's make scenario one manually. Um great. Test, test the room. At this point, we're going to form a test. So, it's two by two. So here are mod daters. Goes in here. In my rooms in my room cell scenario room cell. So what's in here? No, oh, so what is in here? Wait, so I gotta go all the way back to room cell dot dot. That's all in room cell. It's all right here. So, we've got cell flags 
and objects. So I'll take cell flags and put it flag and put nothing there. And objects and put nothing there. This is what it is. This should bring in nothing. So this is just here's empty. Here is what an empty two by two room will look like. And does it load? It doesn't. I don't have it currently loading anything. selector when I do this this is going to say edit the scenario do I have my current scenario I do kind of Well, let's go let's go to here what's whatever the thing is and let's uh, edit there scenario so that's what we're gonna do right into our editor context we're gonna say all right load that in and then send it on over to the thing So that we can get into here and test this code that we've been writing without anything going on. Okay, so very similar to so I've got that so scenario. And then my editor context. Oh, you know what? I don't I don't need I need, just need a thing that says load the scenario. So I don't really need don't need you. I don't need you to tell me the scenario da da da. Don't need a don't need a load scenario function. But what I do need in my edit context Context, I need a load scenario. So I've already got here's the index. Oh, no, I don't. Mm. Get scenario. Oh, nope, still need that. Okay, so keep that. Keep that. And I need utility. scenario am I on? I'm on this one. So grab, so load the scenario, really descriptor, and then I'm going to next to load the, the actual scenario in here from JSON. Go to it. 
except in the load screen, which is its own discrete piece of functionality here. So this is a what in the world is this? Oh, okay, this load scenario. So, and then do that. So this is going to spectacularly explode because I know I'd, I'd get I'd get um, things throwing all over the place. But that's okay. We're going to work through it. It does build. Okay, so start editor, open scenario one. There it is. All right. Don't run. Scenario room from JSON. Object, objects. We don't know anything about objects, do we? So did we not properly construct our objects? Have to, we're gonna have to step in. That's all right. So we've got that. We got. Um, we start with scenario, right? Scenario from JSON. Right now. So this is what we're gonna do. That one. Okay, so we're going to clear. Then we find here's the items. Items is some stuff. So for the items, that's the room. Rows is what? That's two. And that's two, so that's good. So the key is it should be test. Yes, it should. Um, we make a new scenario room based on descriptors. So the room, and then we're gonna we're gonna go in here. I'm saying, all right. So we got all these properties, we got all this stuff. We are at row zero. So we have an array. There's our column. There's our array. So now cell properties. We go in on this column and row. Columns is ah aha aha. So. Did not set the size. So I need I need to go here. Okay. So let's stop this for a minute and let's say what happens. Start editor open that one. Okay, so going to keep going. I'm going to go in to that. Columns. Ah, aha, ah. Uh, it says columns. So go to column count and row count. Oh, dude. 
here. When clear happens, I want Kafka. I see my problem. Columns and rows. explode. Well, that's not okay. Okay. So I want to actually step in through here. Well, because it doesn't, it's not really doing anything yet. It may not be calling any of those things. Start. Editor. I want to go in here. It's where they want to be here. F11 into that. That's that. Yep, okay. So that's fine. Then F11 into my from. Clear objects. That goes in and finds that's a an array of nothing. And that's also an array of nothing. Okay. So at this point, uh, we can go ahead and let's make the floor. in here. I think all I have to do is say type is four, right? We should also be able to say the avatar is here at zero zero. So there's the floor and there's the avatar. Right? Should be able to do that. And this this should certainly blow up because it's going to try to load things and it doesn't know how yet. Start editor open scenario one. So I'm going to get rid of that breakpoint, get rid of that one, and we're going to say, boom, oh, hey man, what happened, what, what, what'd you do? Okay, so I have properties, and it says, whatever it says, this thing is a, an object, and the value is items, value one, 
get type. All right. So that's good. So I got that. So I have my descriptors somewhere, right? Need my okay, so const has to be string property type equals type. So we know the auto those properties property type. So we know what that is. So auto descriptor equal descriptors. Get descriptor type name. So we know that. And then what sort of thing? In the end, it's got to it's got to poop out one of these things. And so how do we manufacture one of these things? The descript seems to me the descriptor has to know how to do this. Something has to know. Identifier T descriptor T instance. All right, we are we're building at this point, so it's uh. Well, make sure we're still building. It blows up, but at this point, I need to do some major stuff. So yes, that's fine. It builds if it doesn't. Load scenario yet. yet. So here's a thing where go T instance. Now the T descriptor. Gonna have to be T instance. Type name. So we're just gonna start with this. We're gonna say, hey, um, well, no, I don't need that. I just need it from the descriptor. What base descriptor? Base descriptor. Okay. Okay, this is already in here. So template type name the instance. I now have to have a virtual T instance uh, create object. And it's const. zero okay 
This this is going this is going to holler pretty pretty loudly. Yep. Oh, look at you. Blah. Look at all that. Yeah. Are we able to sit yet today? I know. I could. All right. So I'm a little bit. I will sit down. Maybe I'll sit down now. But in order to do that, I gotta move my move my monitor and stuff. It's okay. We're build it. We're we're building anyway. So I'm not I'm not really gone. I just don't wanna sicken anybody with weird camera motion or whatever other hijinks is gonna show up when I do this. Ah, and we're done building. But. Moving things around. Moving things around. You back. You down. All right. That, that. And hello there. So now, now I'm sitting down. I've got my new self a new streamer chair today. Okay. We're gonna need the particular type of whatever. So we're gonna include um, the scenario object instance because my T-based descriptor type is one of those. So now this is gonna be okay with it. We're gonna build our way through this. Mush, mushle banana, what's going on? <sighs> Welcome to the stream. we got here we don't like scenario object instance uh, ooh this could be interesting this type is going to get meta this is not the game about ships actually I don't know what this game is about yet because it's it's having a pretty severe identity crisis So I've got I've got some I've got some main menus and whatever. Um so I've been I've been working on menus and an editor and the editor of what? So I know it's going to have a map that you can walk around in. So there's actually graphics here. descriptor <clears throat> so we need view scenario scenario instance I use SDL2 uh, so let me The link. I should always give the link. Do I have an SDL? Do I have a little doodad? I, if not, you know, I should really have one of those.
command. You know what? That's a that's a question. That's a question that gets asked. So now that should work. Boom. Ah, look at that. All right. Go me. Go me with Nightbot custom commands. <clears throat> okay. So now. Right. And we'll say you're going in include scenario object instance. Descriptor scenario object instance. That one. And build some more. So right now the game's in the middle of going kind of template crazy in order to go how can I represent my data? in a way that everything can get to everything else. <sighs> oh, this one is... Nope, not that. Eh, nope. Up oh, there's no create object yet, so that's good. Good. That tells me the things. Can't instantiate the abstract class. That's absolutely correct. Uh, and what do we have for a base descriptor? No base descriptor. Base descriptor says you can create objects. It's going to be one of these. It's not virtual anymore. Well, it is vir it's still virtual, but it's actually implemented here. We'll take one of those and put it in the creature descriptor as well. And now we need to put these things in our creature descriptor. Descriptor. I'll take the whole thing, go over to Terrain Descriptor. And now it doesn't return a value. But that's alright. Um, um, So now, so all right, so my terrain descriptor comes from the properties and then I create an object and in order to do that I'm going, I don't have instances yet, yet. Basically, I need a terrain instance that knows how to do stuff with I mean, something that derives from scenario object instance. Oh, that's got to be. It's got to be this. So, okay, that's going to be just fine. So there's, there's a thing now that has gotten more tightly coupled. This, so these are now all very tightly coupled to the scenario, but that's okay. Add new item. Data, I'm gonna go actually make a new filter called instances. Okay. Which means that that thing goes in there. Over here in data, and have instances. New filter called instances. It's 
now I need a terrain instance and a creature instance. So we're going to add a new item, a header file called a terrain instance. H. All right. So we're going to bring in a scenario object instance because that's what you're based on. Namespace asparent class terrain instance is public scenario object instance. We've got these things. We also need to add a new item, um, a creature instance. And it is more or less that thing with the word terrain crossed out and the word creature written in, in crayon. But so my terrain descriptor too much too many things open at this point. So one of the things no. I need to scenario object instance. And what I think I want to do here, so my terrain instance can so public. And you're going to be a terrain descriptor. So we need the terrain descriptor. Terrain descriptor, it's abstract scenario object instance is not. Okay, I need can cover. What are you not? Okay. Uh, okay. So my scenario object instance. What the aspirant and asp and this. Okay. So we'll define aspirant. All right. Define aspirant. An aspirant is a person having ambitions to achieve something, typically follow a particular career or person whose ambitions to achieve something. So that is, uh, what else we got? To aspire. So I don't know. I still don't. The part, of, part, of the, uh, part of the crisis is uh, I don't know what he aspires to be. So it's kind of meta. I aspire to have a game about an aspirant. So that's, that's what it does. Okay. Uh, okay. So where's can cover? So yeah, really it's an ambitious title. Terrain instance. Okay. And then the same thing goes over here in creature instance. But I put creature instance here. I put creature descriptor here. I include the creature descriptor. So, all right. <sighs> yeah. So, all right. So now I need some instance things down here. Add. Let's, let's make creature instance first. Add new item, CPP file, 
creature instance. We include creature instance and namespace aspirant. And we make another one for terrain instance. Take that and put that in your terrain instance. Okay, so this one I want to keep that one and keep that one, keep you, keep you. What do we think we need you? Maybe that one, maybe that one, that one, that one. I think we need you. Don't think we need you. No, I don't think the rest of these. Close all the things that aren't pinned. Great. Let's do it. So the thing that I want in my terrain instance is it need we need to implement these things. We're going to implement them over here. So right on. And let's see, you are a descriptor. And I think I can go with what is it? Uh, scenario object instance descriptor, I think. That's cool, and let's see, see, old object, or let's call you OBJ, good old OBJ. So terrain instance, I can only cover the return OBJ is equal to a null pointer. That's the only place where you can put a terrain instance. But okay. So when I'm making, when I'm creating an object, I will return a terrain instance, return new terrain instance with this. And over in my creature descriptor, something very, very similar. It's just it's a creature instance instead. Creature instance. Got to bring that in. Creature instance. So that's my creature instance. How, so how how well do we build now? Because that's going to be a... <clears throat> Alright, what don't we have? Creature instance, creature instance. Oh, do I not? Did I not? Ah, yeah, I didn't didn't put these in there. All right, so this winds up being very very similar to this, such that we can do here creature descriptor. Okay, so that's all cool. And so it's going to be interesting. So we 
can't go on nothing. So if OBJ goes null, return false. Okay, null pointer. If it's a null pointer, we can't do that. Uh, else. Um, kind of instance are you? Are you a... Well, we can cast you. Auto. See, I can give, I can give this some sort of hint as far as are you a, are you a. Are you a terrain or something? Okay, let's go up to here. Let's go. Let's go and let's let's make life simpler for us. No virtual pool is terrain const equals zero. All right. And we'll just we'll, we're going to walk this line here. Is creature const equal zero? So we have to implement these for each of our each of our types. And this this gets this gets fussy depending on how many types of things we have. The terrain instance. So first off, I have to go into my terrain instance, and I have to say these things. These things all go on all the types of instances, and, and really, it's a lot less convoluted than trying to trying to cast and whatever, because I want this to be simpler and go. Okay, this is a thing. There are only a finite number of these. I imagine probably five, no, up to five easily, but not ten. So it would be up to. 10 of these functions, and that's all right. Well, we're going to do this, blah, blah, this, blah, blah. Okay, so the train instance, yes, return, true, your train. Return false. You're not a creature. But in the creature instance, we go the other way. Say creature instance. Is it terrain? No. <clears throat> is it a creature? True. And cover else. Um. Well, really, I can. No, let's let's not. So return. Let's let's do this. So return. Obj not equal to null pointer and obj. Is terrain. So we now we can plop we can plop a creature onto terrain. We probably plop a creature onto other things as well. But we have we're at a very, very simple stage at this point. Wow, I'm sitting down. I've I've not like I've been <laughs> <laughs> I'm down in my streamer chair. Nope, that's a little bit okay. That's still, you know what though? It's a, this is this is much better. Life is getting so much better. Ugh.
ஓகே Okay, we're going to run it and we're going to see how, how far it gets before just exploding. Start editor. Open that one. Okay, still great. Check from JSON. Okay, so this is where we're at. So the descriptor. Create object. Who? Jay, what is that? Don't know what you are. You are a. DJ. So you are that object. Now, this object needs to do a from JSON. We're going to return DJ. But we also have to OBJ from from JSON properties, which means that scenario object instance scenario object instance has to have bring this in. A virtual void from JSON const and low man JSON reference equals zero. Pure virtual. It's going to load all the things. So this is necessary in both creature instance. there and in there so now at the moment it's not going to really do anything when you attempt to load them because there's nothing to load in that go to the terrain instance there's that switch that to terrain instance it does some nothing so but it's going to load it I think <laughs> Slango 98 what's going on welcome to the stream oh you it, I was in the middle of building. Interrupt away. You're kind of lost. Okay, what are you lost? What are you lost on? Okay, you wrote some PHP and HTML code, right? Okay. Okay. What specifically don't you know how to code? Well, see, PHP, it's not... PHP generates HTML. It's uh, PHP is a server-side thing and just runs server stuff and poops out HTML to render. You're not going to have login code in HTML. HTML has this is what things look like. You might have some JavaScript in there that calls into PHP, and that might be what you mean. Is that is that what you mean? You have some sort of JavaScript login form that posts over. You didn't learn JavaScript yet. Then I don't know how the HTML code is calling PHP. Because <laughs> typically in PHP you'll have it you'll have something.php that'll 
Uh, there's always a uh, paste bin or bit bucket or whatever. Put like a link on paste bin or bit bucket. Or if you have a git repo. And also, uh, full, full disclosure, not a PHP expert. I have dabbled in PHP but it has been a number of years. And also I used other similar technologies in the past that give me familiarity with, with such things. But if you have, you know, paste bin or Bitbucket, a GitHub or a GitHub gist or whatever else you call, whatever else things. Okay, so these things are going to load just fine. Is that okay? So now it's gonna load the thing, man. Start editor. Open. Open that one. All right. So now my scenario. Close all the things. Close all tabs. It loads in an example room with 2x2 two two terrain and a feature upon it. I'm not going to go to a Google Drive. Sorry. You, if you, you, can, you can paste it to Bitbucket or to Pastebin, but I'm not going to go to your Google Drive. You can also do uh, let's say GitHub. You can do these things, GitHub gists. Right now, there's GitHub gists. You might do that. You can do one of these. These things are swell. Go here, put it someplace here. There's all these. This this is this is a pretty lightweight place. Assuming you have a GitHub account, and if you don't have a GitHub account, you need a GitHub account. Yeah, yeah. Who put all this code in here? Okay, so when I open up the thing, so now when I'm here. <clears throat> Open view. So now I get to make one of these. <laughs> well, it kind of loads it. Uh, I should have a save function. I don't know yet. Not gonna, not gonna make one. Mm, there, you have a GitHub commit. There should, there's typically a way in, in whatever Git place to send a link to a commit. Or if you just have the code, just put it into a gist. Put it into a gist. Because gists are quite simple. Because I can go. Um, 
So you let it go, and I could take. Let me let me stop this for a second. Because if I really want, I can go. Okay, here's my here's my editor context, right? So I go to get GitHub gist, and I just go pasty pasty, and and I create my create my secret gist. Well, this is this is C plus plus here. See, and then after I, after I make my gist, I could say, here, look, go look at my gist. You can look at my very code. You can look at my code. You can comment on it. You can do whatever. You can do the things. Yeah, the the ship game was in F sharp, and this is in C plus plus. As it turns out, I know more than one language, and also the. Um, the goals are different, and I chose C plus plus for for this project. Not that there's anything wrong with whatever language. You know what? I've worked in a in a number of them. I don't write in Rust. Um, the the thing about Rust, so I'm not I'm not opposed to Rust, and at some point in the future I may learn Rust, but there's a little too much zeal in in the Rustafarians for my liking. It's actually a culture problem I have. Because the Rust folks will, will will endlessly tell you how Rust solves all of your problems. And I've used enough languages to know that no language solves all of your problems. Every language has, a, has problems all its own. And also, a new language starts with no problems, but, at, but each, each language grows. So, okay, like C++ here. C++ has a lot, has a lot of warts in it. So there's there's all this namespace, all the stuff that's been tacked onto C++ over the years has made it more than a little cryptic to to do to do things. Because like this whole, uh, so yeah, some of these some of these are, are just you'll wind up with. This stuff like const what, and then there's actually the double ampersand thing for what for move semantics stuff. There's just stuff all over, and some of it gets really hard to use. There we go. That's a gist. Okay, so that's HTML. Yep, yep. They have an image, an article. There are many fragments in est. Of the Volker Besonders Algemark Licht, then er ein Verbungsbach Furt, then the Antwerten, Drauf Raten, of the Beweiber Wirklich, Gut ist, oder is it, nur gut verkauft. Yeah, no, I'm, I know. I'm my German isn't great, but I'm getting I'm getting the gist of what you're doing. So R bytes, not in Gaber. Okay, so it posts to that. There's that. There's that. Okay. Yep. And then so there's your. So there's that, and it posts to index.php. So this, would this I assume would be, what what is this file? Oh, you can put different files. You can actually make uh, different files in it. So here's the index. So that username equals user. So session, what does session start to session start and then in a session header. Okay, so then this 
droite. See, now this seems wrong to me. It's, this seems like that. I don't know why. Is this a straight character someplace? This doesn't look like it's. Okay, so, ah, session starts. So, username if is set to session that. If is set and is set, if the username is username and password is the password, then set that and header location equals success.php. Okay, so this is index.ph. No. Yeah? Okay, so this is all together. Or should. I have to admit I don't have the uh, the expertise necessary to help here because if you're posting to index.php and this does the hey did you log are you logged in set the header to success you just want the order what do you mean the order Okay, you watch the videos. All right, that's that's what this looks like. So if you are logged in, then you go to success. Otherwise, if you are, if the user is that and that is that, then, and I'm assuming this does a redirect. Oh, so yeah, then so otherwise, yeah, you'd whatever, whatever PHP else. And then if else, you would have to, you'd have to have an else over here. So if it is set, if these are set, then right here on what you have is line 60, you'd have an else doing this thing to go back to this page. That's what you would have it do. Does that make sense? So it'd be a little little else. Let me can I can I edit? I can't. Can I <clears throat> Well, it's an easy thing to do, but uh, this is this is where you're checking, and if it's wrong, then you do something else. So, does that answer your question? We'll get back to faffing around. Okay, great. Glad I could help. All right, so what am I doing here? I want to... So I think... Well, one of the things I want to make sure of, this is what I want to make sure of. So my scenario of that... Oh, wait, where's my scenario from JSON? I want to go right here. Now, will, will it, will it break there? Okay, so now, what's in here? This has rooms. There's one room. There's a room called test. And test is a two by two room with cells. There's four cells. And number zero should have um, uh, 
has two objects and the first object you are a descriptor terrain and you are a descriptor of creature oh interesting type creature type Huh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Wait a second, so. Type is floor. Ah, you know what? It needs, I need to have the name of this. Uh, my descriptors need names. And so that's going to be an interesting problem. Because. I have no I have no idea. So when I'm loading in my dis my descriptors data descriptor um no it's not here. Okay, no, it's in the headers. Data Descriptors, base descriptor, managers, where's this thing? Where's base descriptor? Go to the declaration. Where are you? Where's your type? I think I also want the name. This becomes very, very important. const std string name your descriptor type and um, name name so right now this is going to fail to build says hey no no you have to do descriptor so cost std string percent name and that so there's name Let's pass that right along oh well, we need we do need that in our and feature descriptor name and properties and same thing here name and properties descriptor so that's name pass the name along okay. are we building it probably not undoubtedly not And the descriptor manager is the thing that does this. Train descriptor, and what's the name? Ah, parse descriptor. <laughs> Go to the declaration. So this is the descriptor manager. Well, if we do const std string Okay, so now that needs to be wherever it is. Descriptor manager. So descriptor manager dot so wait this thing does this thing not it's a common descriptor manager. Okay, we're gonna have some problems. We have to we have to now march this out to the other stuff. But we'll go. We're gonna go from the outside 
in because it's the outside that needs to morph. Yeah, see, so what I have to do is common descriptor manager, go to definition. Press key and then base descriptor manager, go to definition here. Parse descriptor, I still also have to have one of these. There's going to be a lot of things. Well, is it UT identifier? Right, okay. So now, now there's going to be a bunch of stuff just exploding all over the place. Should be interesting. But we'll see how many many places were broken. Yeah. Building a lot of CPP files. <laughs> Rebuild all the things. Okay, cannot instantiate the abstract class. Right, because Let's go to the declaration of color manager. Go to declaration. First descriptor. And you are const std string. Eh. And font manager, similarly. So color manager graphics. Oh, not you, managers. Color manager. Boom. Not manager go that declaration. And the font manager. We don't care. Although if we really wanted, we could give it the name, and we it would we would now know the name. So that's that's this is not this is not a bad this is not a bad thing. And the layout manager. Yeah, my car. Okay. We'll see how many how much has to get rebuilt now. All the things. Yeah. Because these things are used all over the place. So a base descriptor manager is enormous impact on the code base. But you know, so here's the thing about build times, right? Um, in in my in my time developing professionally, there have been builds that take like half an hour. And not always. It's a full build, a full build of something that takes half an hour. This is relatively minor. Does not take one argument. That's true. So now that should build. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah, no. Base descriptor manager. No, we get to we get to go through it again. Um, but so I need it to build faster because I need to do it now. No, no. Um, there, there's a, there's a lot of tools or whatever where they're, what they're trying to sell you is 
If you want to develop faster, you can develop faster with this stuff. And, or let's go faster, develop faster. Developing faster is a bad idea for a number. Well, developing faster can be very bad because the rate at which you add code to your project is directly proportional to the amount of garbage code that you add to your project. You are junking up your code with every line of code that you add. So why in the world would I want to do that faster? Hey, it is builds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in my so where'd base descriptor go? It's here somewhere, right? Base descriptor. Base descriptor dot h. Okay. Name goes in there. Mm -hmm. Let's let's make sure that I don't know. Run it. Okay. So name name is four properties. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now what I want though is don't does base descriptor have give me the name. I want to give I want you to give me the name. Const std string eh, get name. Const, we're going to return name. Because that's the part that when I serialize my object back out, this is this is what I put there. Because a descriptor, so the relationship in the game between a descriptor and an instance, there's that stuff that doesn't change between all the instances. Of, so it's basically the difference between static and instance variables or instance properties. An instance, like in a terrain, um, oh, for example, and actually let's start to define these things because what I also don't have is I don't have any Yeah, I have absolutely, absolutely no stuff. So let's 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 begin. Let's start having some things. Um I need very very roughly I need a person I need a person and I need a You know, or don't say. All right. So how about we say file save as? We're gonna we're gonna put this in our project because well why not? Uh, still two. Uh, aspirant. Aspirant. Assets. Images. And we're just going to say this is <clears throat> this is the thing, okay? But one of the things that I have to do is I have to resize it to three times its original size, and I don't want best quality. I want nearest neighbor. So six fifty one. So we're because one thousand nine hundred. So C. Okay. So we want 
that many pixels by that many pixels so that everything becomes super chunky but that's all right save that thing so now we have to go to our textures Call you tile set. Let's call you tiles. Assets, images, and what is the name of you? Sets, images, and we'll call you that. So, bip, 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 which is that. Okay, here's in one bit tile set, which we have permission to use. So we're just going to go, okay, there's that thing. So now, my sprites. Sprites. Got a whole lot of font sprites in here. Floor tile. It's going to give me these things maybe we call it I don't know let's call it maybe we do call it this so that's fine that's cool we can do that I'm gonna say maybe yours in one bit tile set and you're the floor tile and so you just need uh, and an avatar tile. Avatar tile. Alright. Okay, so that gives us that and but our width is gonna be 36 in each case. Six. We're going to say so there's that I need in my descriptors, your floor type terrain, and sprite is. Sprite is called that, so Sprite is called Floor Tile or Avatar Tile. We called Avatar Tile. Now let's get the positions correct. And we will just simply make you are at 978-3 and so zip over here Any one of these here is fine, but let's let's put it right here. So this one's forty-two eighty-one. One. I think we're always, uh, I don't know, I don't know. So now I've got a choice. So for both my terrain descriptor and my creature descriptor, I have a hey, here's what it looks like. So base descriptor,
I think base descriptor beats you a sprite name thing. Whatever. Well, no, you know what? That's all that there is here. And so maybe there's a concept called a common descriptor. So this has the type and the name. This I always need. I always need a type and a name. With my terrain descriptor, let's let's let the duplication happen. I'm gonna get go to the declaration of that. I'm gonna say private. Yeah, no, it just bothers me. <laughs> it bothers me. This is what I want. Class common descriptor. So stuff that stuff that's gonna be the same for all the descriptors that aren't the base. It's not base. So all of these things. Right? And we say that's a thing. Public common descriptor, that's what we do. Our common descriptor. I say base descriptor name and properties. All right. Name properties. Again, thanks, IntelliSense. There you are. Okay, good. Thanks for catching up. So, we're going to entering descriptor.cpp. So, you say common descriptor, and this should work. But, so in common descriptor, so you're going to be public, public, private. Um, you're going to be const std, no, oh, no, it is std string uh, sprite name, right? And const std string property sprite name, this property sprite equals sprite. Sprite these properties at uh, property sprites. And we need a const std string reference of get sprite sprite const. And that's going to return sprite. Right, right. So that puts the common junk in there. Do 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 ba da ba da -dum. Get Sprite might have more of a See, but there might be more to it because you might look at a different sprite based on the condition of the instance. But we can put that in later. Okay, so right now, that's the sprite for the terrain, and now I need a common descriptor. Add new item header file common descriptor. The way we do this, so we say uh huh, uh huh. Uh huh, uh huh. Get rid of you. And over here, 
get rid of you. We just say we need common descriptor. So we're going to put the same thing here. And you're going to be based on the common descriptor. And over on the creature descriptors of CPP, common descriptor takes care of that. Right on. So we should build, and it should it might even work. I I mostly expect this to work. I'm at a call it a good 85 percent. It's gonna it's gonna work. So many files. Nope, oh, but looks like that's going to be about all the time we've got. Because I have to get things going for the day. I got stuff, stuff to put in here. How long has he been going? I don't know, but we're gonna we're gonna raid our friend Graham. Graham is an Aussie Darrow. Thanks so much for hanging out. We're gonna go over to Graham. Get off my lawn. Hey Grumpy, how you doing, man? Alright Max, um, check this out. I'll put it in an isometric view so that we can just see 